Okay, welcome once again to Grow Is Personal Podcast, your number one podcast for personal growth and development. Today we have a phenomenal guest. I mean, he's not a new face to the tech industry. He's not a new face to those who are in Nigeria. I mean, I put, I, I placed your your profile, um, you know, because I used to do like a, a, a comment soon on my status, and someone said, "Hey, I know that. <laughs> that's my guy." I know, and if I mention his name, you probably will know him. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's coming on the podcast. I said, oh, I can't wait to listen. So you're not a, you know, uh, a new face to, 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 the, to the social media platforms uh, that we know of, especially, I think, I think you're more on Instagram and, and LinkedIn. So All right. you're not a new face. So I'm going to do a little bit of introduction for you, Itayo, and then we'll jump right into the conversation. Hi, my name is Emeka Morrow, and welcome to Growth is Personal. Each week, I share insights and strategies that will equip you to accelerate your personal and professional growth and bring you conversations that will empower you to thrive in life, career, and business. Itayo Gumala is a technology entrepreneur, the founder and CEO of Utiva. I'm very curious about Utiva. I want to know more. Like, you guys are doing amazing things, by the way. The managing partner of Fleet, and the managing director of Entrova. I'm quite curious about the way you name your brand. <laughs> you tire, <laughs> built the largest technology talent company with more than 90,000 people and some leading global brands like Diego. Eitayo is a tech entrepreneur who is popularly celebrated as the tech and Web3 evangelist. Eitayo worked in the past as a product manager with Creative DC in the United States and also joined AfriSans as a vice president of partnership and business development. Eita is 2024 Facebook community leader and Antler entrepreneur, a 2020 Hillcon. Did I pronounce that right? Incubator fellow. Halcyon. <laughs> yes, Halcyon, yeah. Halcyon, yeah. incubator fellow in the US, a 2019 Global Good Funds Fellow, United States, a, tw a 2018 Chevening Scholar funded by the U UK government, a 2016 Atlas Corps Fellow, United States, 2019 Unleashed Talent, Shenzhen, China, 2015 NLI Associate Fellow, and 2014 Carrington Youth Fellow. Come on now. He also studied business strategy and change at Endebonk Business School and consult as an AI product manager. Come on, please give him a round of applause to grow this personal community. Man, Eitayo, your profile says a lot. Let's jump right in. Tell us about you. What do we not know or what are we yet to know about Eitayo that is not on this profile? <laughs> um, I think the only thing you did not say is that I'm the Maya Gu of Aurelia <laughs> Oh, okay. I think I think um, I saw I saw like you got a title or something, right? Yeah, that's a that's a local chief tendency. And and see, I so much adore it, just way above all these global, all this whatever, US, China, I don't, I don't care. The the fact that I'm the Mayegu of my, my Aurelia Gigi, I so much love it, you know. Well, and I'll what, tell you. What inspired that, that, please? Um, I just got to a point and just realized that I am not called to change London and I'm not called to change the UK and the... And the United States, my calling is not in, you know, Washington DC. As much as I am a global citizen, you know, I am a global citizen. But I just realized I unraveled at some point of my life that everything I have done, everything I have built, is supposed to, you know, create a ripple effect for my local community. You know, um, mm -hmm. every time there's an inner desire. There's an inner aspiration right inside of me. It's quite very deep to build another generation of people like myself that came out from nothing to something. Um, I have spent all my life, you know, traveling around the world. I've lived in the US, I've lived in the UK. Um, my family's in the UK, I have a UK global talent. You know, I've got the UK global talent visa. I have got almost 10 years access to the United States. You know, I have friends in over 50 countries, but um, I don't feel too fulfilled when I'm in the UK or in the US when compared to when I'm in Nigeria. 
there's just a desire to be here, to do a lot here, you know? Um, and I, I just sort of like realized that maybe that's an inner calling to build another generation of people like myself, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And I don't think everyone has the same calling. I don't think everyone is actually destined or called, you know, to be, you know, that way. For me, I feel always very good when I'm just in front of my house, sitting down with my guys, and we're just talking and gisting and drinking. I feel way better than when I'm just in the flight and I'm jumping around the world. I'm like, see, mm. this is where this is where my affinity is. However, you know, sometimes I also feel very drained. I feel quite very empty when I'm here, you know, mm. and there's a lot, there's 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 this desire to go and refill. You know, so I mm -hmm. I have to continuously be around the world, refilling, changing and improving my perspective to better build, you know, the Nigeria that I want to see. And that's some sort of like the way I think about, <laughs> about I, my and it, and it, it, make, it makes so more sense. Because one thing I always tell people, you know, when I was in Nigeria, is that you, you can't change, so oftentimes you can't change a system by being in the same system. You have to go to right. a system that is working to get Absolutely. insights, ideas, um, mm -hmm. And then, then you rub off on you, and then you bring that back to the system to That's implement. It. And I've seen that those people who actually implement changes over the years are people who have gone to those systems that is working, mm -hmm. take what they can take from there, learn, and then they come back to implement. So fantastic, right. you know, um, um, achievement you have. And I, I mean, I saw some of your videos. I'm like, is this guy going to be in the ballet? <laughs> <laughs> I like what? <laughs> you know, and, and, and I like the fact that you embrace culture, right? You embrace yeah. um, you embrace your identity. Because I mean, wherever we go in this world, we're Nigerians, right? And I don't I don't um, take it for granted. So yeah. let's go into a conversation around your background in IT. So because we, we we have a you know a wide range of audience, but my audience oftentimes are usually the and you'd be you'd be shocked between 18 to 22. And then we're okay. seeing a, a, a rise of the, I mean, 22 to 25 to 35, but I'm seeing mm -hmm. the, 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 the increase of the 18 to 22, the younger ones coming okay. in to listen. So I know that there are young people who are going to be watching and listening to this podcast today. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your background and what inspired you to get into the technology field. Yeah. I mean, when you think about uh, my life, and I kind of like think that this is also in some way, you know, um, insp inspiring. You know, I, I was the guy that wanted to be a doctor. You know, went to the university to study medicine. I actually got admitted into the university, you know, to study medicine. But after one mm. year, the university dropped me off, right? And then I didn't have a choice. My only option was to choose physiology, which is a, like a, like a sub-medical field, right? So I graduated from University of Illori um, studying medical physiology. And when I got into the job market, I was so confused. <laughs> you know, there was no direction, mm -hmm. there were no mentorship opportunities. Um, I didn't even get that opportunity to really see what I could become, what I could evolve into. You know, so the only available opportunity for me then was just to start volunteering. You know, and I'm this guy that was brought up believing that um, you find and discover yourself in your process of giving. You know, so mm -hmm. I started to give myself out, I started to volunteer for health action concerning the environment and UHC. I volunteered for Leap Africa, volunteered for Yalva. And while I was volunteering, I met a mentor, you know, in 2012, who told me about, and this is very important to our listeners, right? The guy told me about what was going to happen, you know, on the African continent. Right mm. in the future, and this was in 2012, and he was telling me about things that would happen in 2015, 2016, 2017 to 2018, and his benchmark was the United States. And guy emphatically told me, guy said, if this happens in the U.S., believe me or not, it's going to happen in Nigeria. So, what option do you have? You know, go back home, analyze the U.S. market, understand the U.S. market and position yourself for the future. And this was in 2012, you know. So mm. when, I started, when I got home that night, I started to read about the US, started to read about the job opportunities in the US, started to unravel the US market, started to see things like software engineering, which was not even a thing. 
you know, in in Nigeria. So I started to hear about UI UX design. You know, there were a lot of there were a few people in that space, right. but it was just like a sprinkle. You know, um, started to read about IT project management, product management. Well, artificial intelligence was it what was not even in the conversation. You know, started to read about Web three, right? But I think even Web three were very very scanty as at twenty twelve. You know, so I made up my mind to go into the IT project management space. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I started also volunteering. I got my first job, which was like a junior role opportunity. In 2015, I was selected to move to the US to serve again. Right. So I moved to the US in 2015 to serve as an Atlas Core Fellow, which was not a job. It wasn't a full time job, it was just a service. You know, it was a fellowship program that brings you into the US, gives you the opportunity to serve. Right, so uh, I moved into the US in 2015, and in 2015 was when I discovered that hey, it has mm. to be tech or nothing. Right, it was mm. in 2015 that I discovered that it has to be tech or nothing because all the conversation, you know, at the head office, I was working with Creative View, all the conversation was about tech. You know, how do we build this product? How do we churn out this technology software? You know, how can we accelerate? How can we fast track? How can we improve efficiency with technology? But at that time, you know, we were looking for tech talents and couldn't find them in Nigeria. You know, the best we had in Africa were in Egypt. So we're hiring tech people in Egypt. We're hiring in, you know, uh, in, in India, of course, in Estonia, but nothing was happening in Nigeria, nothing. And that was the moment I made up my mind that I was going to build a platform that helps Africans to learn technology skills. That's, that's some sort of like the journey for me, yeah. Hmm. You know, one of the things, one of my curiosity, when I see people who have, you know, you know, blazed the trail, they're doing stuff and, you know, pursuing their goals and dreams and all, I always go back to what was the, the foundation? What is the mindset? Because mm. you, you'd be surprised that there are people who were in that, period of your life, that phase of your life, who probably have gotten the same, you know, um, either they were probably in the same environment, but they didn't take action. So what was the, what, what was your personal growth journey like that, you, that helped you develop the mindset to catch all of this um, inspiration and then make this move? What, what did you have to do to be able to be in that particular frame of mind? Yeah. Um... And because this is quite very interesting that you are asking the, this question because I don't get to get a lot of people ask me that question. Usually what happens is that people just breeze through when they get to the point where I tell them, oh, I was volunteering. Usually people don't do a bit of deeper dive into what actually made you, what's the substance, right? That's right. And for me, for me to be honest with you, it's the overconsumption of resources. I mm. read a lot when I was a teenager. I mm. read so much, you know. I read, I read literally more than 500 books as a teenager. I had mm. one of the biggest libraries, you know, as a teenager, as a 17 year old guy, you know. I had read books like Tin La Hay, you know, mm. Think and Grow Rich, Rich mm. Dad, Poor Dad. I had read, I had consumed all those books. You know, for me at that age, it was just about study to show yourself approved, mm. right? I was mm. consuming aggressively, you know, because I had also had friends that the only way we conversed was uh, motivational words. That was the only way we had conversation. You know, I, I had friends like Festos, right? Which was like one of my best friends, you know. And when we're talking, it's like the person that has the better you know, you know, all those motivational phrases and cash right, your right. That was that was how we could prove that we that we were good. In fact, at my teenage age, the only thing that many of the ladies that followed me that dated me then saw was my you know portable quotes, the different <laughs> analysis from the scriptures will lead you to a great paralysis. <laughs> so you know, all those. <laughs> I was, to be honest with you, I was really, really very deep. As a teenager, I read a lot of books. I consumed a lot of resources. So when I got into the university and I got dropped from medicine, 
to be honest with you, life wasn't happening to me. Rather, I was enjoying it. Mm. I was enjoying life because I had built my inner self, I had invested so much in terms of resources, I had learned a lot. And I was talking to my friend at the office today that I had read the Bible as a teenager, as a 17 year old guy. I had read the Bible A to Z four times, you know, mm. four times. I read so much, I had consumed a lot of resources that when I was broke, everyone around me was seeing a broke guy, but I was seeing a wealthy, you know, a Come successful on now. Come you know, on now. Because I had invested so much in my inner spirit. And that's pretty much what I would say. So these days I don't read a lot. <laughs> Right, I don't and, get to read a lot you know, again. Why, why I share in you? Why, <laughs> and I get you. Like I'm, I'm there too. You know, I have my library now, and sometimes I'm like, oh god, I'm struggling to even finish a book. You know, uh, but the, the good thing about it is that you built a foundation. One thing I want to, I want people to, who just mm -hmm. because what you just said now was deep, and I want people to catch it because. We're always focused on, and, and we see this generation today, oftentimes we're focused on the end result. So for example, now mm -hmm. they will see you now each time like, oh my goodness, he has a tech company. Oh, how yeah. can I get into tech? They're all about the, what they can see, the flashy thing, but they've not seen the root, the root that you had yeah. built over the years. That was to okay. people then, but like, what are you doing, right? So all those times you were investing was the route you were building so that whatever you build today will stand, you know? And yeah. what you just said is so important because I mean, we can, if, if tomorrow something says, you know, and maybe, you know, God forbid, but I, I'm sure that if Utiva was taken from you today, you would go yeah. and build something I'll else build that's still like Utiva yeah. because you Correct. have built the foundation. So that's what I want Correct. people to get that. It is the foundation, the things you're doing right now. So to the young person who's watching or listening, you might be asking myself, oh, how do I get into tech? Yes, you can learn all the tech and the software, but if you don't have the foundation, the mindset, the, 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 the way to be able to understand how you are being led, your calling, mm -hmm. all those things are very key to building yeah. whatever you want to build in the next five, 10 years. Thank you for yes. sharing that, uh, Itayo. Yeah. Now let's go to the misconception. Yeah. People always, you know, um, have this misconception about getting to tech. You know, for example, I, you know, I read agriculture in my university, oh. but I wanted to go into computer science, you know, in school mm -hmm. uh, when I was, you know, after high school. And, you know, I couldn't get into computer science, you know, uh, for one reason, I think I was, I was trying to go to UUBAN, but I ended up with the person who was helping to process it, got me crop production. I'm like, what is C? Computer science, I get me crop production, you know? But I've always loved tech. So I learned how to design myself. I learned HTML back then, you know, developing websites by myself. Yeah. So there's a lot of misconception like, oh, if I want to get into tech today, I need to be, I need to have a computer science degree, for example, mm. right? So what are the misconceptions for people who want to start a career in tech? Mm. So the first misconception is believing that tech is always for those that want to write quotes, you know, mm -hmm. and the first thing I always tell people is that think about tech as a value driven industry, you know, everyone, everyone, and I repeat, everyone is accepted in this industry. It doesn't matter if you love to write quotes or you don't like to write quotes. It doesn't matter if you are extroverted or you are an introvert. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you are the guy that likes to wear suits and jackets or you're the guy that just want to wear around leg. Because I see a lot of people think that tech is only for those that want to wear around legs. And around so neck. they're like, no, you're joking. You know, there are lots of people in the tech industry that wake up every morning in their ties and their suits, you know, because that is what is required. So think about tech as a holistic industry right at a much more to make this very easy and simple i would just say tech is divided into two aspects you know there's a part of tech that is very focused on coding and writing codes right of course you know the software engineering the cloud computing the um cyber security you know those areas the blockchain you know artificial intelligence you know machine learning data science very very you know, coding, you know, um, focused. Focus, yeah. But there's another side of tech that has nothing to do with codes, right? Um, product management, UI, UX design, 
um, business analysis, technology sales, product and digital marketing, those areas also operations, you know, um, tech law, climate law, though, uh, climate tech, sorry, um, legal tech. Those areas of tech are also very big. You know, most times people don't talk a lot about them, but I've seen a lot of people who make more money in those areas and those fields. Why? Because the skill set that you're bringing, right, has nothing to do with coding because coding is quite very straightforward. It's easy to learn, right? The skill set that you bring into all this other non-coding part of tech that I've talked about, you mm -hmm. know, it's quite very difficult to master. Skills like communication, you know, leadership, empathy, strategic thinking, research, you know, as much as those sounds like, Cliche. It sounds Cliche. very easy. Mm -hmm. Those are very, very difficult to learn. Yeah. It's a very difficult thing to be an empathetic leader. You know, you grow into empathetic leadership over a long year, you know, long term period. Unlike writing Python code, you can learn Python code in six months and be, you know, it's the same thing. But communication, right? Mm -hmm. It's not something you learn in six months. It's right. something that you must have been learning for a very long time, right? So tech is beyond just coding. There's a lot part of, there's a very big part of tech that has to do with bringing yourself, bringing your leadership, your research skills, your communication, your ability to listen to customers you know, and all those things, right? Mm -hmm. So tech is quite very big. The first question I always ask people is what do you love to do? You know, immediately you're able to figure out and find out what you love to do then we just have to then find your space for you in the tech industry, the tech industry. right online yeah. oh tech is about abc and you have to fit in we don't think about it that way we think about it as what do you want to do what do you want to become and then we'll find you you know in the tech industry you understand what i mean yeah yes yes definitely definitely and i think like you said you know if I was to go into tech now, I'm going to the left side, you know, what you just yeah. mentioned right now, the side of consulting, you know, and, and I think, you know, that is the side that people, you know, tend to shy away from uh, because mm -hmm. it's a lot, as I said, it's hard, like to be able to know how to, draw, you know, get a, for example, user, um, there's this one that you have to do first to, to be able to get the, the reason why it's a business analysis process where you have to be able to understand the customer and understand their needs and right. do a need analysis yeah. and be able to drive, you yeah. know, run through a scrum, mm -hmm. whatever it's, it's a whole lot of com complexity. Yeah. So <laughs> for someone who is new, right, who wants to, has no prior experience, where should they begin to get into tech? Um, so I would say that. If you're quite very new and you're still a little bit confused, I would say play around a little bit. You know, have an open mind. Have an open mind. Believe that you're coming into an industry that will help you become really, really successful. And that's my first recommendation. Think about it this way. You're going into an industry that has the capacity to help you become anything that you want to become. You know, so don't even jump into it. If mm. I'm going into an industry that will build me into a wealthy, successful, fulfilled, you know, purposeful person. I don't just want to jump into it and say, oh, data science, oh, cloud computing, oh, cybersecurity. No, no, that's not the approach. The hmm. approach is to, you know, play around a little bit, you know, just find someone you could talk to, you know, find a coach that you could have a conversation with, you know, um, attend some free sessions here and there, you know, one hour here, 20 minutes here, 30 minutes here, just to sort of like have a much more holistic understanding of what you are getting into. Right. Because you might think that data science is what you love and then start data science and then hear about cybersecurity and get confused. Oh, jeez. But if you, yeah, if you spend the first week just watching, excuse me, just watching YouTube videos, you know, talking to mentors, jumping on calls with people for 10 minutes, two minutes, you would have a much more robust, you know, holistic knowledge of what the industry means and what the industry looks like. And then you can make a saner decision. You can then say, okay, I hear cybersecurity, I hear UI, UX, I hear product design, I hear product marketing, I hear business analysis, I hear product management, but I think, haven't heard all this, I am a better person as a product manager. And then you go into product management. One mm. of the things you then also need to realize at the back of your mind is that although you have chosen product management, 
right? Mm -hmm. When you get into product management, you might now begin to find out that, oh, I am a data-driven product manager. I am going to be a technical product manager, so I want to go learn coding. Although I don't want to write code, but because I want to be a technical product manager and a product manager, but I just want to master coding a little bit, you know. So you will find yourself and unravel yourself, right? Mm. And the second thing I also, also need to then mention is that once you have gotten into tech, just throw yourself into the industry. Volunteer here, be a part of community, attain the event, continue to do because you find yourself in the doing. Because you're right. a human right. being. So you find yourself in the being, in the process of doing a lot of things. That's when you then figure out that I think this thing is not mine. This is mine. And then you just you know, double click the one that is yours and you continue to grow in that area. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. That's a great mm. point. Yeah. Uh, and I want you to talk about, you know, first you mentioned around figuring out what exactly you want. But is there also a place where you also should look at the market? and yes. see what exactly is the problem mm -hmm. or what is the concerns that you would also like to be a part of is yes. there is, is it okay to look it in that direction as well i say hey um there's this and again it, it comes from pour yourself into the industry like you said okay. but also can they also take it from a standpoint of what is the market saying and can yes. i just tap into what exactly is going on now and get involved in that yeah. You know, what, what is, what's quite interesting is that it's not everyone that has got the capacity to do a market research, right? Because that's also another skill. You know, yeah. understanding the market is a, there's a level that you need to get to, to understand the market. So yeah. if you don't have the capacity to sit down and do a research, read some of the top leadership articles to understand what is the market saying, you know, one of the best ways to then understand the market is in the process of talking to people who are a little bit you know higher and and some steps ahead of you because mm -hmm. in the process of talking to them they then tell you you know because they have gone you know two three ten steps ahead of you they're able to expose you but if you've got the capacity to do a market research right it will be a very fantastic thing to really do you know to just understand the market watch a lot of youtube videos watch listen to podcasts just to understand what are totally that's what i mean say about this industry that you're getting into, right? Is it an industry that is going to be distracted? So, for example, if you're learning software engineering today, right, just remember at the back of your mind that you are learning a skill that will directly compete with artificial intelligence. Hmm. Now, it's not to say that that skill is not relevant, but it means that one of the smartest things to then do is to learn software development and understand the concept of AI. You know, so that you then become an AI product, uh, sorry, an AI software engineer. So mm -hmm. you are positioned as a software developer, you know, for the future that AI is going to control, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's all these things is always in the process of just talking to people, just having conversations, you know, join a few sessions here and there to just see what a leader is saying, you know, about this thing that you want to get into. And you will find yourself in that process. Great, great. I think one of the key 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 points to know there is a, a high sense of curiosity, I, and I think a lot of times we we tend to get our secure uh, our curiosity out of the window as we grow because you know yeah. we're trying to play safe. Yeah. But I think you know no matter what age you are in, you have to be able to embrace curiosity to know. Okay, this is what I'm seeing, and I'm right. willing to fish out, get stuff out of it to know what exactly okay. i'm to do so i think curiosity is a very important um uh, yeah. quality to begin to continue to develop as you go on now can you mention um uh, what platforms right should uh, mention like maybe three or two or three platforms that you know beginners or those who are really interested in going to tech should begin to look at to develop tech skills yeah i think number one platform that i can't take away from anybody is youtube you know just I, I always tell people that if you're able to commit 20 minutes every day to watching a YouTube video in your field, right? Mm -hmm. In one year, you will have built a reservoir of knowledge, right? So um, YouTube videos, because a lot of people who are, you know, putting insights, documenting insights, you know, creating a bank 
of knowledge you know on youtube so youtube is a very it's a go-to you know platform for quick insight into whatever you want to do number two is youtuber right mm -hmm. of course you know yeah, comes yeah, to YouTube, yeah. we've, got you, we've got you covered now when one of the things we always tell our students is be happy be ready to buy short courses you know, those five dollar ten dollar courses you know just buy them you know if you have the resources if you've got the money now if you don't have the money right join communities you know go on twitter and follow the top 50 people that you think that you really admire right and follow whatever twitter spaces these guys are joining you mm. understand you will see a lot of conversations happening right and you can bury yourself you know in that reservoir of insight in that reservoir of knowledge you know so the first recommendation for me will be youtube the second will be you know utiva the third will be if you can buy short courses if you don't have the resources go on twitter go on linkedin and just or go on x <laughs> and hmm. just follow the top 50 people that you think are really doing well and if you ask if you want to ask me how do i then know the top 50 people right easy go on google and say or yeah, google will be the best go on google and say hey list the top 100 technology companies in nigeria once they give you those top technology companies in nigeria put each of them on linkedin hmm. and the people that work in those companies copy their name into twitter to see if they are also on twitter if they are on twitter follow them right you know linkedin will give you a much more rigid you know yeah. insight because most people don't interact a lot people just post and comment but when you copy their names into twitter and see what comes out you can easily find some of them maybe not all some of them and then you can follow them to see the conversations they are part of and also follow them when they are part of different twitter conversations you know or twitter spaces and that those are like the very easy you know non-monetary ways to really build your capacity yeah yeah i think that that's especially the part of uh youtube absorbing knowledge uh, yeah. yeah there's there's something that it does to you as much as you want to go and start practicing mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you also want to absorb insight yeah. uh, and yeah. it, it makes your journey a little bit um yeah. smoother because you're getting insight from people who already practice and then yeah. you go and implement now yeah. if you're let me, let me quickly, so, so sorry so sorry to you. let me quickly yeah. also say that you know one of the beautiful things with watching a lot of videos is that it changes your language it helps mm. you to improve the way you speak about the subject, you know, because you know, faith comes by hearing whatever you right. believe comes right. through whatever you hear. So by the time you immerse yourself in watching different YouTube videos, you won't even know when you start talking like an expert. That's because you, right. start, you, start, you start speaking some picking some terminologies from the videos that you've watched unintentionally and some of these technologies will sit in your subconscious and by mm. the time you are in conversations you just start showing those words you're using them and people start saying you like oh, when he starts you know that is already using words like mom's test as a product manager data engineering you start using things like data modeling and start to respect you because you're using the right words using the right phrases and the right sentences for whatever you're doing yeah awesome awesome let's talk about uh you know some form of formal education or certifications that if you want to get into tech, you 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 have the say you have some knowledge, but you want to be able to get some sort of credibility in the market because uh -huh. there's something that you know affiliation to those bodies or getting certifications yeah. does to your brand, right? So what are the and this is like a broad space now, a broad question, but if you're to throw out two or three certifications that really will equip you and give you that credibility in the market, what would that be? um i mean it ultimately depends on the part of tech that you want to go into you know? that's right so for part of tech don't even require that you have any form of certification right so product management ui ux design product and digital marketing um areas like technology sales um software engineering doesn't require that but when you now start getting into the cloud and cybersecurity space it does require some certification right mm -hmm. so cloud you know certification very required uh, so for example people will now say oh i'm an aws certified you know 
um, I'm a Mike at Microsoft Azure certified, you know, I've got the, uh, the AWS, this, I've got the Azure, this, you know, because it's the cloud engineering space, cybersecurity, lots of professional certification that you can acquire there, you know. But usually what I always tell people is this, before you choose where you want to go and learn, you know, ask three things. Number one is the, the broad spectrum of the partnership that they have right because that is in some way that is the global credibility you're looking for mm. you know so these guys have the affiliation here affiliation there affiliation there you know because those type of affiliations you know in some ways you know um speak to their credibility right the second thing is you know while tech is not a very certification heavy industry you know you might also want to ask do they have you know, some level of accreditation, you know, because the accreditation mm. process itself is quite very intense, intense, you know, so it also proves to them, to you, that they've gone through some level of quality control. So for example, Utiva is accredited in the US, you know, through the ACTD, the American Council for Trading and Development, and that process took us almost three months because they had to look into all your curriculum, your trainers, your model for learning, your approaches for delivering the training, and all these things, right? And then you didn't have to, you know, get qualified, you know. So uh, although tech is not certificate heavy, it's not certificate driven, but, you know, that is a level of quality control for you. And mm. the third, which I think is the most important, is the faculty that trains, you know, the faculty that trains, you know, ultimately that is important you want to ask things like oh who's going to train the software engineering class and then google the person just to some sort of like see the type of project that that guy have worked on you know his level of exposure the um, the, the network of the trainer and all these little things here and there are the things you just want to take a look at so it's not just enough to say hey the certificate i want to acquire uh, because mm -hmm. it might just be another certificated you know tech person but it's always more than the certificate. You have to look at these other three things that I touched on. Okay, let's go to the money now. Um, <laughs> I, I, want, I want to go into that that aspect as yeah. well because we, we, we hear a lot of times that there's money in tech, there's money in tech. Now, what what would you say, um, you know, how, do, how can a beginner or someone who's already going to tech now begin to make some income what, what should they begin to do in the first place to make money in tech what should they do i think in tech three things i always recommend number one is you have to build your own portfolio you know there's literally nothing you can do without your portfolio so build your portfolio get one two three projects that you work on on your own by yourself you know and then you can get a few mentors here and there to help you check to give you feedback, to give you recommendation letters, you know, I'll pick this back to you know Utiva, for example. An average student in Utiva graduates with four different projects because this is tech industry. Uh, you can't just theorize who you are. Mm. You have to show it through practice that hey, I can do this, I can do that. Number two is that you have to then be ready to blow your own trumpets. You understand what I mean? You have That's to be ready right. to blow your own trumpet. You have to go on LinkedIn and other social media and dare people and talk about, hey, I can do this, I've done this, and share some of the works that you have done, right? So that's where your own miracle is. The mm. miracle is in your noise, you know. Talk about the work that you've done, make some noise about it. And the third one for me is you then need to now begin to apply for some type of jobs. But there's a trick and a strategy around that. Because I see, when I hear people come to me and say, Tyler, I've learned a tech skill. It's almost one year now. I've not landed a job. I said, show me, number one, where you've been applying. And what I see is that everybody's applying to Flutter with and Piggy Vest and uh, and Andela and, uh, you know, I'm like, no, what's going on with all these other small startups that you probably don't even know about, you know, because mm -hmm. those are the ones that are really looking for you. You know, mm. go and apply to the Flutter waves or the Stripes in the US, you know, or the Monzo in the UK. Uh, those ones are, oh, it's super competitive to get into those ones. But remember, it's possible, but it's just that you are still very early, you know. So don't discount all those small opportunities. So the first thing I always tell them is that give me top 50 companies that are not popular with a staff strength of about 
11 to 50 and a staff strength of about 1 to 11. Because those are the ones that are desperately looking for you that you don't know. Right, but because they are not popular, you typically not find them a lot, or you don't you don't find them everywhere. The second thing is that I then ask them, show me your CV, show me your cover letter, show me your LinkedIn profile, because although you might say tech, oh we wear round neck here, we wear jean here, but the guy that is going to interview you doesn't wear round neck. He's an HR manager. Mm. That guy, the typical that lady, is a typical HR person. He wants to see a very good CV. He wants to see, he or she wants to see a very good cover letter. And he or she wants to see a very good LinkedIn profile. Mm. An average person in tech does not even have a good and sound, you know, LinkedIn profile CV. Mm. And don't forget the global jobs. And I say, see, your supervisor is not the one checking your LinkedIn profile. Your supervisor or your potential supervisor, you know, is not the one checking your CV. It is the people in the HR you know, department. And for those guys, it is red flag to them if you don't have a good LinkedIn, a good CV, a good cover letter. And then we then talk about the interviews. You know, the interviews. You know, how do you make, and all these things are the things we don't talk about in tech because everybody just believes that it's about coding and doing it. Yeah. You know, before you code, someone would first interview you. you mm. And I you see, we hire for hundreds of companies and it's very disheartening that when i talk to a software engineer sometimes i just join the interview call and i listen in and then you hear the software engineer say, oh can you tell us about yourself and the guy said uh, uh no 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 you can't get a good job that way hmm. you know you can't get a good job that way you have to be articulate you have to be sound you have to communicate passion you have to sound like you're actually interested in the job, you know. So there is a there's a there's a job preparation class that you have to go through to really prepare you. So usually, why people complain that they learn tech and they don't do well in the tech industry is that they've learned the coding side of tech, mm. but they haven't learned, learned actually what helps them, what will help them to land the tech job. Tech job. So if you actually want to land the tech job, then you have to go a little bit beyond just learning the coding side, you know. I so 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 many times I hear people come to me and they say, "Tayo, I have learned a tech skill, but I haven't landed the tech job." And I say, "See, you have been taught tech, but the guy who is who is going to interview you and give you the job does not only care about your tech capacity; he or she also cares." about your ability to communicate ability right. to, to ace your job interview that is very important yeah i i really want to see it what you just said right now it's a master class on its own because <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the that's the greatest challenge i see now like yeah. i'm going to be giving a talk very soon and one of the my emphasis is the fact that we have been wired to focus on getting the skill, like go get the knowledge, maybe cybersecurity, learn how to do cybersecurity, whatever. But we are not wired to know how to market ourselves and position ourselves exactly. for those opportunities, right. right? So I tell people that when you are do, if I, you'll be shocked that mm. most people that get the jobs are those who know how to communicate. They might not ah, be so a sound <laughs> in the tech. They even learn on the yeah. job, but they know how to yeah. sell themselves. They know how to network. They know how to 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 tell a story around what they are doing, right? So I Correct. think it's something that we need to re-emphasize. So if I was going to ask you, how have you been able to position yourself? Like, what are the things you know? Um, I wouldn't say steps, but I because I know it's it, it, it's not really a steps. What are the things you had to do to be able to position yourself for opportunities? Yeah. Um. So I will share. Uh, a few things, right, with you. But I think at the center, at the heart of that is just learning and being comfortable with selling yourself and mm. talking about your little wins and saying it out of, you know, humility with a whole sense of ownership. Ownership. You're owning yeah. it because that's one of the things we're not taught. We are taught to be humble but we're not taught to own it. I'll give you a very interesting example. I was speaking with a super global investor. You know, I have tweeted 
that I'm building my second startup. So one of my mentors uh, and also a local investor in the Nigerian markets, you know, double clicked and liked the post and then shared. So this guy just reached out to me and said, oh, he's from New York. Um, he works with the New York, you know, University um, Stern School of Business that he would like to have a conversation with me about what I'm building. Now, we got into the conversation. The guy then asked me a very tricky question. He said, how come there's so many Nigerian startups that are shutting down, you know? Hmm. And I told him, I said, see, I don't know why Nigerian businesses are shutting down just as, as much as companies in the US and the UK and China are shutting down. One of the things I can tell you for certain is that a two-time entrepreneur who have built a first and second successful business, right, in Nigeria with a presence in 19 countries, will not just wake up someday and say he wants to build another startup and then build that startup to fail. That, hey, I'm not in the game to fail. I've done it two times and this is my tall time. I'm not gonna do this to fail. And then the guy commented and then the guy said, he likes my confidence, you know, but this is typical of the Nigerian confidence. But just of recent, they realized that Nigerians have super confidence, but Nigerians undersell themselves, hmm. you know. So it, it's your confidence, but you're underselling yourself. It's like there's a level that the world is expecting you to get to because you're Nigerian. You know, that's what we are known for. We are known for selling ourselves, you know. And, but, but sometimes you sell yourself and then you're trying to be very humble. You know, sell yourself and own it, own that territory. Mm. You know, that's the best way to access international and local opportunities because people want to give you the opportunity when they realize that you own it. And owning it also means owning the truth, owning your mistake, you know, being ready to say, this is who I am. I'm not doing this to play. I'm doing this because I just want to get this thing to the last end and make it to become successful. That's the foundation. That's the basics. You know, mm. then we can then talk about all the things like, oh, one of my strategies, <laughs> and I think this is very interesting. One of my strategies is I look at people who are 10 steps ahead of me and I then look at what are these guys getting? What are they celebrating? And I'm pursuing the same thing. You know, so mm. for example, yesterday, I was doing a very deep dive research on Colino, one of the super successful, you know, tech entrepreneurs in Nigeria. I was doing a deeper research on him. You know, all the fellowship programs, all the programs has been a part of. And then I listed all of them in the deck and I told myself, I said, 2024, I'm applying to all these things. You know, hmm. so strategically looking at people who are ahead of you and saying, what have these guys done on this space? And then replicating the same thing and following the same full step. You understand? Mm -hmm. there, there are chances that you would evolve and become like them. You know, for me, for example, when I look at my mentors, I'm asking myself, what are my mentors doing? You know, one of the reasons I'm heavily involved in politics today is because I then look at some of my mentors who are in tech, and I see that these guys are playing around politics and power. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna wait for them. You know, I'm gonna start playing around politics and power too. You know, <laughs> these guys are hosting meet and greets in London and in Canada. In fact, my 2025 strategy, and I'm putting this out now, my 2025 strategy is to host meet and greet in 20 countries. You understand? Mm. In Canada, in the US, in the UK, in Australia, and continue to bring Africans and diaspora together in all those countries. You know, so I'm, I, you have to continue to study the people who are ahead of you. What are they doing? You know, where are they winning? How are they winning? And then replicate the same thing. Hmm. And it'll be very interesting if you can also connect with them. At the point you're replicating it, connect to them and say, oh, I saw that you did this thing three years ago. I want to do it. You know, can you just give me some hints, some, you know, insight into how I can better navigate, you know, those things. And that's pretty much, you know, how to access local and international opportunities. Yeah. I mean, you, you share something that's <laughs> so profound about, um, learning from those who have gone ahead, because I think, you know, most people, you know, young people, people who are getting to, you know, and this, we're talking about tech, but this can apply to any field. We right. realize that most people want to reinvent the wheel. Like they, yeah. they want new, new, <clears throat> one new invention. You know, they're trying to say, oh, I, I'm coming up with, no, 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 no. 
just look at someone who has done it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I learned this from Sam and He said something. He said, mm -hmm. just, and I look at what he has built, you know, with Daystar and all of those, yeah. people, and, all, and all he has done with his, the brand. And I, he said, just look at those who have done it. Yeah. And if you look at the likes of David the, Uribo, the they just look at what they have done with this university, yeah. go and get it. So I think it's it's a lot of, we, we have to settle down and say to ourselves, what are yeah. Who are the people? Who are you following? You know, and that's why mm -hmm. I tell people, we don't just follow people because what who you follow, the that means what follows you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you say, oh, I can yeah. find opportunities. Who are you following? Because if yeah. you're following the right people, some of them yeah. are sharing these opportunities. Some of them just, for example, you said someone just liked and yeah. repeated. I mean, if you are not following that person, that person is not your Correct. circle. That other person will not see the opportunity that All you right. have. So right. I think it's important for young people to be able to know now that hey, it could even be a, you know a Italian. Like I, yeah. let me let me say, I I follow you, eh? <laughs> and when you came to you know you, you talked about you know I am like I have followed you to the point where I I I see what you do, Itiva. I because mm. I look at it from the branding side of things and I see how mm. you are able to. As I was like. Your introva, like the naming and how you structure your 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 ideas, yeah. how you put yourself out there, the way you tell your stories is what mm. attracts people to you, right? Correct. So I think it's something that we all have to learn from. Now, let's talk about looking ahead, right? What are the emerging trends and technology, right? That people should begin to look at, especially mm. for your, you know, Utiva, uh, Utiva. What are you guys? What is the Imagine trends that you are pursuing as a company yeah. and yeah. that people can begin to tap into now to stay ahead in their career. Yeah. I mean, so one of the things that we are doing at Utiva right now is understanding how technology is going to disrupt, you know, few industries, especially industries on the continent that, and I'm going to take this again because I think this is quite very important to, to, um, to spill it out. You know, so every time we sit down at Utila, right, and we sit down with the practice leads and the experts, one of the things that we're really trying to unravel is what are the industries that are key drivers to the African economy today that are not powered by technology? So the financial services, mm -hmm. we don't care. That's already powered by technology, right? But there are other major drivers of the African GDP, right? The FMCG manufacturing, right? Fast consumer goods, you know, agriculture, right? Um, real estate, re yeah. <laughs> real yeah. estate, right? Yeah. So they, because we then understand that these are industries that will drive the economy of the future for the African, you know, markets, we are then building, you know, courses to build leaders in those industries. So for example, we're going to launch what is called the, the mini tech MBA, the mini tech MBA in real estate, the mini tech MBA in e-commerce, the mini tech MBA, in fact, we are building a mini tech MBA in social commerce, right? We're building mm. the mini tech MBA in health tech, in climate tech, because this is not, this is not the conventional, um, skill based right but it's the taught leadership right and building the next generation of leaders that will drive those industries right so there's going to be a mini tech mba in fmcg right because in the next two to three four years and it's already started yeah because there are great companies that are playing in the fmcg market mm -hmm. right that are tech you know businesses like sabi for example right tech business played in the FMCG industry. Like the real estate industry is also going to be powered by technology. So our job as Utiva is to build the leaders that will drive those economies, right? Or, or, or those industries. And that's one of the very interesting things that we're doing. Now, the second thing that we are doing today is to then unravel what are the skills of the future that Africa is not ready for yet. But we need to start to build people that will understand the concept of those skills, right? I'll give you a very interesting example, artificial intelligence. We don't want to build AI engineers. That's not our job, right? What hmm. we want to do is to convert everyone, you know, into artificial intelligence, you know, lovers. 
So the, right. the, we don't want them to be artificial intelligent engineers yet. You know, maybe the African market is not ready for AI engineers, but everyone should understand the concept of AI, right? The concept of blockchain, the concept of cryptocurrency, the concept of Web3, you know, the concept of virtual reality. We all need to understand the concept so that we then go back home and say, how do I adapt the knowledge of this thing, you know, to the industry, to my industry? And that's why we are partnering with the likes of HFM, you know, to train 5,000 people in artificial intelligence, just getting them to love it, just getting them to understand the concept of it, and then getting them to think about how this thing is going to shape the future, you know, so that when the future then happens, you know, we started the conversation hmm. and we can then begin to drive people into the core of that, you know, of those um, skills. And that's pretty much how we think about uh, the future here. And I think what you're doing is really phenomenal because we, we there's no doubt that Africa mm. and Nigeria, you know, would really power um, yeah. global economy too, because we can see that our people are moving out and they're getting the, I mean, they're adding to those economies yeah. there where they are, mm. but they're also getting the skill and the knowledge. So mm. if we start now, even building those at home to now begin to embrace the AI concept because people some people still feel yeah. like it's it's a it's a it's a mm. mystic something like it's this mysterious yeah. stuff like how was the AI you know but and now it's already in our work like even to yeah. set up any anything you want to do now you should be able to think about how and I was having a conversation the other day people were like is AI going to take my job mm. like that should not be what you should be thinking about yeah. right you should be thinking about how would I infuse AI to what I do right. now. Right. right. How can right. I begin to get the knowledge and insight on AI to begin to put, you know, make my work easier to make yeah. my drive yeah. my efficiency and performance. And yeah. and even if it's that what that's what you can learn now. So yeah. when AI begins to come fully, like I mean, there are many, for example, in retail, AI is taking away is, is driving retail right now. Yeah. Here, for example, in Canada, right? Like there's a lot of things. There's a place you go into now, and you can literally walk in and. You don't even mm. talk to anybody. It, it just scans, and yeah. you're you're done. You're done with your shopping, and you you mm -hmm. right. All so right. we have to begin to embrace that now. So Tayo, yeah. thank you so much for this rich conversation you've had. You. Now, <laughs> uh, we I, I usually ask three questions to my guest. Um, the questions that revolves around personal growth and 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 what you're doing. So these questions, you're going to answer it in one word for each of mm. these questions now you can especially on the word but you the rule is you only use one word to answer the question one word. okay yes yeah. so the first question is what is the most surprising lessons you've learned about yourself since embarking on your entrepreneurial journey hmm. um given hmm. you know is given you know um, if you want me to expand shit, I can yeah. spend a few minutes just to explain. Yes, please. Yes, please. The best of the people that have helped me to build, you know, Utiva to this point are the people that I met in my process of giving myself. Hmm. You know, at some point, super tired, invited to speak at an event, almost canceling the event, like, sorry, I can't speak at this event. You know, but just showing up tired and like, let me just go do it. Met a lady at the event. Oh, uh, I like what you're doing at Utiva. You know, I, I've just finished marketing. Da, 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 da. Can I join you guys? And the guy, the lady then eventually became one of the head, head of marketing at Utiva. Super brilliant. You know, mm -hmm. um, always at the point of giving myself. You know, mm -hmm. always at the point of giving myself. Um, and I hear when some of my mentors then say, oh, you're talking too much. Entrepreneurs are like, no, 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 your calling is different from mine. Hmm. For me, I am an evangelist of what I'm doing. You know, uh, so in my, in my mission, my calling is in the noise, is in the evangelizing of my work. You hmm. know, not being the apostle. You know, you can be the apostle and just sit down somewhere and not, not, don't talk a lot. You know, people just hear your voice once in a while. That's your calling. 
I thrive when I give myself, when I give my knowledge, when I give my time, when I volunteer. So as I am right now, I am volunteering on several boards, you know, several boards, you know, and I'm not being paid a dime, but the insight that I get in the volunteering, you know, I take it back to my company like that. I'm mentoring these guys to do this thing. Even we are, so we're not doing it. Hmm. And then I take that insight, I take it back, you know. Oh, so well, giving, no. giving is what really helps me to, to, to be what I have here. That's 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 powerful. And I actually wrote it down here. You know, when you started talking, I knew giving was part of it. So it's not a surprise that you said that. Yeah. Now, next question: If you could go back in time and <clears throat> and give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Huh. Yeah, if <laughs> you're about to unleash unleash the beast now, <laughs> it's going to be in one word. It's going to be. Um, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. I, I, let me say big. I will say, let me use the word, it's going to be difficult. Difficult is the word I'm going to say. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Difficult is going to be <laughs> shit. Yeah. If it is easy, right, it's not sustainable. It sounds good. If it's easy, but it's not sustainable. I'll give you a very interesting example. With everything I've done in Utiva, right? This is the time. This time is the time that I am supposed to be benefiting from what is called, uh, I'm looking for the word now. Um, hmm, let me find the word that I'm looking for it. I'm Right now, I'm supposed to be benefiting from what is called defensive markets with everything i've done in utiva this is the time i'm supposed to be benefiting from what is called defensive markets mm. because the industry has a very low barrier to entry anybody just wakes up and they just say i'm gonna go do training and they will copy everything utiva has done and they will do it well why because it's not difficult to run a trading organization. It's not difficult. Very easy. So if it is easy, don't do it. It's you will make a lot of money at the beginning, you know, because it's easy, you will thrive at the beginning. But I give you five years, your entire work will be copied. You will copy it, it will become cheap. Why? Because it's easy. The barrier to entry is very low. So anyone can wake up, any single person, intelligent, not intelligent, smart, not smart, energetic, not energetic, single guy that has money, guy that has investor, anyone can wake up and run a training organization. There is no defense to that market. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if I were to give an advice to my younger self, I would say, go into that industry that is difficult that is tough why because if you figure it out you know at least the next 10 years <laughs> you would have gotten what is called a defensive a defensible market right so mm. i mean how many people can build a flutter wave how many people can build a jumia to even get the flutter with license, you will sweat. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? What, what license do you need to build a UTV? No, it's not license. Anybody can wake up tomorrow and find three people and say, come on, trade for me. Come on, lend data science. And everybody will rush into it and lend data science. And that is why at this point, we then understand this. So we are pivoting UTV into something really, really massive and difficult, extremely very difficult. Extremely very difficult. In fact, what we are pivoting Utiva into is so difficult that if we fail, it's over. Right? But if we become successful, you can't compete it. <laughs> you cannot. Because, and, and that's how to build a business. You need to do the difficult work today. Today. Do the difficult work today because if you do it today and you figure it out, you would have built the capacity to do difficult things. 
Mm. But not the capacity you would have been, you'd have played in an industry that is defensible. That's you understand right. what I mean? That's yeah. right. That's a powerful, powerful principle there. Hmm. Start now, do the difficult thing, and yeah. then, and, and the truth is that even if you fail, right, mm. you, you will have learned a lot. You will have right. mastered the stamina to be able to, right. to withstand the, the test of time. Great one. Mm. The last question here is, outside of work, what hobbies or interests brings you joy and balance? <laughs> uh, so, in, in one word, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be. It's already like, difficult. You can say it more than one word. I, oh, I, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I think I, I am an extrovert, so you would always see me uh, in the club. You would see me partying with friends. In fact, I don't think there's a week that I'm not partying. I, I don't even think there's a week that I'm not partying. You, oh, but I'm when I see you, I would know. I mean, if they should look at you from afar. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm the right definition of Italawa. <laughs> I am always, I'm always outside, you know. But how do you, how do, how do you get the time to do, to, to, to balance that with work? I think, I think everyone has got time for something, you know, for some mm. people it is family, for some people it is church, for some people it is community, for some people it is Netflix, you know, for some of these entrepreneurs that don't go, don't go out a lot, they're watching movies at home. It's not like everybody's walking and walking and walking, walking you know, yeah. but for me, for me, I, I I rejuvenate when I'm just outside, you know, catching right. fun with my friends. Yeah, that's pretty much you know the kind of life that I love. And all my opportunities are always you know always when I'm talking to friends, I'm catching up with them. You know, people are people are a lot more relaxed. You know, and then they're just telling you, "Oh, let's do this together. Let's build this and that." Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think some of my best investments too. I probably met them, you know, um, in the club. Where we're just drinking and the guy is just telling me about the problem and he's solving and i'm probably just overthinking it because i'm then high i'm overthinking the problem like why has someone not solved this thing and then we mm. just after the event or after the party we then cut it like i want to invest and be a part of this and yeah that's pretty much you know mm. one a question came to my mind but i'm i'm probably gonna no I, i'm gonna ask it you cut your hair some time ago yeah i was trying to buy a <laughs> <your> farm <laughs> What is that like? Man? I was trying to buy that. So I was driving with one of my godfathers, and then we went to a local community. Right. And we we're having a we we're having an evening, you know, time with the king. I won't mention the community. Yeah. We we're having an evening time with the king, and it's a, quite a very local community. So people were outside, and we drank one bottle, two bottles, and the chiefs were coming in, and then the king then called the head of the youth, you know, and they're like, oh, I should, I like, oh, bring everybody now. Then they brought everybody. But me, I'm high life, you know. I said, bring everybody now. And then they brought everybody and started drinking. Around 8 p.m., there was a particular guy who then told me about his farm, that he, you know, he had inherited a farm because his father, in fact, the guy did not even tell me about his farm. His farm. The guy was about to be, called, um, about to be um, made the chief, you know, and that is his family's, you know title mm. you know so the guy then told me that oh his father has these hectares of land and they're not using it you know that is that tried to do a farm here and there that they were not using it so i told him i said you know what don't make noise i'm going to talk to the family so at the time i left i gave him a long you know cash and i was very excited i said we're going to buy this tomorrow so i thought to myself that if i come this look <laughs> if i come with this my look those guys will overview me Mm. You know, but I didn't go with my car. I was on the bike, you know, got there in the bike. I was, oh, I was with a, with a cross bag and I cut my hair. And I literally bought that land almost 90% cheaper than what I would have paid. Paid. Wow. You know, wow. and initially we bought it, we signed all the documents, we started fencing, and it's one of my farms today. <laughs> wow. Man, that's that's that was very daring and that's very admirable. Well done, mm. well done. Thank you so much for being on the, on the show. You, it's, you. it's just a, I mean, this is one of um I, I think you you are the one of the people who have really mm. shared um you know more of the personal stories, but also yeah. stuck to the to the rules. I had to break the rule for my one, <laughs> one <laughs> most people I they can't keep to the one word. So thank you for being a part of the show.
Yeah. It was a pleasure. Um, if you were good to connect with you, what's the best platform? Is it LinkedIn? Is it Instagram? Oh, yeah. LinkedIn is the best. Uh, but then I'm also on Instagram, AE.ako on Instagram. So uh, I'm quite active on LinkedIn and on Instagram, both of them. All right. All right. Please go follow AE Tayo Ogumala. We have different people from all part of the world listening to this podcast. Thank you for being a part of today's episode. I hope you were, you've you learned a lot from it. Um, if you're getting into tech, you know, you want to know about tech, you want to join, you know, start a tech, you're thinking about what do I do? Reach out to Otiva. Um, I think it's Otiva. But we'll have the link on, on the show notes so you'll yeah. be able to um, connect with Otiva. Um, they're building something, you know, um, amazing yeah. in Africa, in Nigeria. So be a part of it. Um, thank you, Ayitaya, for being on the show. And to become your way in the next episode, remember that your growth is personal. No one is responsible for your personal growth but you. Stay blessed and bye for now. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you love this episode, share with your friends on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. If you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our episodes. And give us a rating. This will help our podcast get more visibility to those who don't know about this podcast. Remember, your growth is personal. No one is responsible for your personal growth but you. Stay blessed.